Good evening, everyone. Time for another member update. Now, this is the weekly chart of silver provided by netdania.com. And I want to look at the bottom that was formed back in the fall of 2008. The reason why is because we're trying to determine at this point if we're forming a bottom. Now, unfortunately, for whatever reason, the volume information isn't available and doesn't become available until sometime 2010. But if you look at the way this bottom was formed, you can see that it was formed over a period of, we'll, we'll put the base price at about 930. It was formed over a period of about two to two and a half months. There were a number of these candlestick spikes down and so it didn't trade really the the price didn't really hold below that nine dollar price for many of these but it still was a fairly long drawn out process now as we move forward the market was just kind of rallying until we got that qe2 unfortunately we don't have the volume for the qe2 breakout but then we get today's modern types of volume figures here and you can see that at, now these are weekly so you can see that we were getting weekly volume of 4 million 5 million contracts a big spike here to 7 million contracts and then it started to get thicker and stabilize as an average around 5 million we'll say then we got the massive smackdown on the Boston bombing and that was because of the the very very long term support there that was at 26 it actually took a big event and it took a big volume move to get us below that 26 price and that's when the, we went into a serious outlier level of volume here you can see a weekly number of 45 million contracts so moving forward you can see that the volume kind of died off after that and we stabilized around that $19 price and then we come into the weekly volume where we are right now so you can see that the we're currently on this this week and the last week was nearly 65 million contracts we're probably going to either meet or exceed that this time if we pull it to the daily you can see that the daily has is nothing like this this boston bombing smackdown so this was a pretty much a one day event that came in and then stabilized itself with that declining volume that declined fairly rapidly you can see it actually only took about one two three four five days until we were actually below uh, the daily volume that we were for a significant period of days and it took um, a long time to even exceed the previous days we had a couple here and then we die off I think this is missing data here actually but so let's move over on the daily to where we are right now and you can see that we've had these series of days that have come in that are just absolutely gargantuan so we're talking about daily volume now if you remember the weekly we were looking at seven million or something like that now we're talking daily volume that is 18 million and then 14 million and then 20 million and then 13 14 million here we have 16 million the next day 14 13 so we've had one two three four five six seven straight days here's the day we started are we going to have that volume we'll see so what does that mean well it it's kind of going exponential on the volume we're average I'll put the average in at 15 and the average before for the week was five so we're doing three times on the daily vol volume than we were on the weekly volume so that's a 15 
to 21 fold increase depending on how you calculate that now the trend does seem to be down but it's not down very sharply so it's down something like this can we maintain these types of volumes day after day after day what does that churn mean it it brings to mind the controversy over HFT and algos now I'm not sure if I'm for this concept or not I've molded over in my head a number of times the idea that maybe they should should just attach a one penny fee uh, to the trades uh, or whatever is necessary a nickel obviously that's gonna bankrupt the algos um, computers trading nanoseconds back and forth um, it's it's not going to be in your interest to do that now now someone asked me today about you know well the reason why the volumes are so high is because it's the same ounce traded back and forth uh, all all of these times and my response to that is well it's the same ounce traded back and forth millions of times and the question I would ask is why? Why would anybody trade one ounce of silver back and forth millions of times? Um, you've got two main players in the silver market, theoretically. We'll say three. Your three major players are going to be your miners, the people that produce the commodity that we're trading. You've got your manufacturers they're the consumers of the commodity that we're trading and then we've got this interesting group that really doesn't exist in the other commodities the savers they're the stackers they're the people who are investing in the commodity that's being traded and because it is a monetary metal because it is something that can be saved and stored because it's money um, that third category exists now if we're talking about corn or lumber or wheat or orange juice obviously you're not going to have that third category because these are perishables so you're only going to have that third category in something that can be stored something that has value oil is probably going to be the closest middle in one of those you can take a bunch of tankers and park them off the sea uh, coast and and store your oil there so but gold and silver are going to be the two big ones that have that third category of investors and the reason why of course is because that's the nature of them as being money and money having that essential element of being a store of value that's why they are what they are so the question is why are they being traded back and forth at such a high level and I think the reason is at least I believe the reason is is because it's due to manipulation uh, the latest or one of the latest wealth watchman articles that he did he did a a response to one of the Martin Armstrong articles where Martin Armstrong is talking about how he doesn't believe gold and silver are manipulated and uh, I think wealth watchman did a, a pretty good job of showing how Martin Armstrong is wrong I'm not going to go and question Martin Armstrong's motives. I've hinted at such things in regards to Martin Armstrong getting out of prison and things like that. But I'll use that topic to segue into what I want to talk about tonight. And this is obviously for members only. And this is about the trolls and shills. Now, a lot of you probably aren't aware of the history of this. So I'm going to try to review some of the history of this. I'm not going to go into the articles about trolls and shills and how the internet is filled with them and things like that. I just want to try to show you from the numbers the things that we've experienced. So I'm going to begin before I go to those things. I'm going to outline what we've done. Now Jennifer, you know Jennifer, she's AG Silver Bear. She has been with me the whole time that we've done all these things. So um, and and she's also the creator of the blog, and she's also probably one of the biggest forces in uniting this community although she's not recognized she was one of the first ones who created blog roles that linked all these alternative news sources together 
including SGT Report and uh, Kerry Lutz and Silver Doctors and all these sites that are similar to our site that are aggregating the alternative news. So the Jennifer was one of the first people to begin doing that and uh, it, it became very successful. It was a very successful model, but it also had a lot of drawbacks. And one of the drawbacks was the attacks that came in from the trolls and the shills. So I'm going to show you on my YouTube channel to start out with um, what we were dealing with beginning with, uh, we'll, we'll take a look here at the video manager page. This is the page that you see when you're a partner, you have uh, videos on YouTube and you can see your released videos and then you have over here you have the number of views and you have the number of thumbs up and the number of thumbs down and you can see here that uh, now I have to explain that recently I have put my YouTube videos back up to comments um, before we took those down and before we launched the member site we were getting something like maybe eight to 10,000 views on each of the videos. You can see here, this one's 7,000, this one's 8,000. But if you look here, you can see 8,000 views, 109 thumbs up, seven thumbs down, 79 comments, uh, similar sorts of averages. Here's, here's a popular one, the dollar destabilization, 12,000 views, uh, 111 thumbs up, 11 thumbs down, 73 comments. So let's go back and look at what we were looking at at the launch of the member site. So if you remember, we launched the member site back in July of, let's see if this comes up here. Um, it's not coming up on the one I thought it was. So. Anyway, we launched the member site back in July of 2012. Let me pull that up. And what I want to show you is the difference between the amount of negative comments and the amount of thumbs up and thumbs down that came in when we were doing that because when we initially launched the member site it was because we had it, the thing had kind of run away from us because we were dealing with so many um, shills and trolls that were pretty much taking over the channel that we could no longer deal with it so uh, this is a good example of the history here this is from before that time. We had 84 thumbs up, seven thumbs down, 77 comments. Um, I, I don't have it on the screen in front of me, so I'll just tell you what it was. So when we launched the member site, we were getting about 200 to 250 comments and about maybe 25% thumbs down. The comment section on our YouTube channel had pretty much been taken over by people who disagreed with us or attacked us and it, it, it became where it was so bad that most of the people who agreed with what we believe in which is essentially that the silver market is manipulated that the central bankers are vulnerable with silver that when the manipulation ends the price of silver is going to rise dramatically these are the basic concepts that we agree with including uh, stacking semi numies and, and tips for that. But it, it got to the point where we were no longer getting enough positive or real comments in the YouTube that we pretty much had to turn off comments on YouTube. And then we turned them back on. The th same thing came back, and that's when we decided to go with a member site so that the people who were discussing with us these issues and agreed with us with the essential points could actually have some type of conversation that wasn't interrupted by the shills and the trolls. Now, when I did that, that member launch video got about 
550 comments, nearly 30% of the the thumbs up, uh, th thumbs down were percentage of the thumbs up, and there was a vicious diatribe that uh, was launched by a number of people, including people that we had worked with who were, I'm not going to name any names, but people who were working with some of the other alternative media sites who not only attacked us, but actually uh, hacked us, accused us of hacking them, um, tried to post pornography to our site, all kinds of crazy stuff. There was actually one guy who said that followers of Brother John F. had broken into his house and had tried to steal his silver. That was really the turning point for me where I decided that I had to get away from these people because it seemed like it had completely spun out of control. Now, this is another example here. This is actually our, our forum on the, the web archive, and the reason is I shut it down. And if you remember this forum, it had user questions for Brother John F. This was the public forum. It was a forum that anybody could sign up for. They'd just have to go and sign up and do that. And this is something that Kevin ran, and Kevin put a lot of work into this site. Kevin's someone that I work with. He is my administrator. He, he's a genius as far as networking and uh, Linux and operating systems, and, and uh, I I've, wouldn't have been able to do any of the things that I've done without him. Uh, but unfortunately, this site was completely overrun. In fact, um, there was a period of time where Jennifer was policing this site, trying to um, delete people who were trolls and shills, and uh, fighting against them in the comments, trying to decide should we, because we fundamentally believe in free speech, but the, the issue is should we counter them with our own facts or should we take abusive people and people who are just obviously liars and just delete them? Well, Jennifer was trying to decide that, took a break from that. I took a break from that because I was very busy as well. And coming back to it, we found that this forum was completely overrun by trolls and shulls, so much to the extent that it was actually a hostile place for me to even go on. Um, if I even went on to my own forum and made comments or anything like that, I was actually attacked by 99% of the people who were on there. So actually, our enemies had completely taken over our own site. I was literally paying money to host a site for my enemies, <laughs> which is uh, completely ironic. So not only that, but because of the link backs and the cross posting and the um, issues with other blogs and stuff, I was having to deal with complaints coming from other sites that have have uh, links to their sites put in here and uh, as well as pornography and profanity. So I, I literally had to shut this down. So we're talking about having to shut the YouTube comments down first then secondly, having to shut the YouTube channel down to the public and go to a member site, and then having to completely shut down our forum. So uh, the reason I shared that with you is because of some of the issues that are coming up now with the member site, and the same sorts of issues are coming up on the member site. Um, this is something that we have to deal with all the time. I, I'm not going to accuse anyone in particular of trying to do these same things again but i will say that jennifer is on the alert uh, she's ag silver bear and if you disagree with the fundamental principles of the site which is that silver is manipulated that when that manipulation ends it's going to go very very high and that most of the mainstream media and everyone else is controlled and that there are a number of shills and trolls who are out to destroy these sites, then you really don't agree with us. Now, I don't have a problem with you disagreeing with me. I believe in free speech. But you have to understand that we have to try to police our site. We've had our sites destroyed at least three times by trolls and shills. And if you hadn't, haven't studied the issue, to understand the divisiveness that they try to create, uh, there's a lot of articles out there on the internet on this issue of how divisiveness is created in the alternative media. 
you can look up Cointel Pro. You can look up a lot of things to understand uh, gatekeepers and how this works. We are not gatekeepers. <laughs> we, we, we are not people who are interested in controlling discussion, but we are also interested in preserving at least some type of discussion for like-minded people. So you have my deepest apologies if you're falsely accused of being a troll or a shill or warned for trollish or shillish behavior. You have to understand that Jennifer and I have put our life's effort into these sites and we don't want to see the member site destroyed again. Now, uh, as the others were destroyed. Now, if I have to, I'm going to have to take the member chat down. And if I have to, I'm going to have to take the comments down. And I'm going to have to convert the site strictly to a site that just shows my videos seven days ahead of time. And maybe I'll get some other added features for members. Not really sure what. So I hope that explains the battle and the struggle that we have um, I hope you understand that there are people out there. I'm not accusing anyone in particular. If you have been warned or if you have been shut down or something like that, don't take it personally. Understand that we have to police the site because we've had multiple sites destroyed and shut down to where we couldn't even talk on our own sites. So back to the silver. This volume is very interesting uh, we have a decreasing trend, as you can see, but we're still with unprecedented volume. The big issue is this. Are they going to try to sell it down again into new lows? Now, it's my opinion it's going to take a huge amount of volume. I don't know even what that number would be. Uh, I will give you a weekly guesstimate to try to sell it down lower than this. I think we're going to surpass 100 million contracts in a week to maybe get down to a test of in the 14 somewhere. Uh, next test all the way down around eight and a half, which we touched on um, once in 2004 and again in 2008. If we get that low, which I can't even imagine, you won't see any physical silver at that price. I'm absolutely certain of that. But my prediction is that would take hundreds of millions of volume uh, contract, an exponential increase, and how far can an exponential thing go before it crashes? And we'll talk to you next time.